Phil, they currently have the 28th pick. Is wide receiver the only play there for Buffalo? All right, so Laura, the further you are from number one, the harder it is for us to say, here's how things are going to play out, and this is what you should definitively do. And yet the Buffalo Bills should be taking a wide receiver yeah. in the first mm -hmm. round of the NFL draft. They had a problem as far as wide receiver depth was concerned the minute they lost Gabe Davis in free agency. And then when you trade away Stephon Diggs, who had more catches than any other player in the NFL over the past four seasons, it only highlighted this is going to be a primary area of need for them during the upcoming NFL draft. And I've got my eyes on certainly players that could fall to them at pick number yeah. 28. But keep in mind that Brandon Bean in four out of his six drafts as the GM has traded up in the mm. first round, not afraid to be aggressive, whether it's a small move up or a big move up would not be surprised if Brandon Bean has his eyes on players like for example Brian Thomas Jr. from yeah. LSU my fourth ranked wide receiver a guy who led all of FBS last year with 17 receiving touchdowns I thought the best deep accelerator in the entire class oh by the way Josh Allen might have the strongest arm in mm, all of point. the NFL so cutting through that Buffalo wind no issue for Josh Allen so certainly the Bills have some options whether it's be uh, whether it's via a small move up or standing pat but they must come away with some wide receiver help at some point early in the draft. So I am in complete agreement with Field as usual, um, and I'm not usually <laughs> team it. trade up uh, outside of going up and getting a quarterback. Uh, I'm usually team trade down. However, I think that there are a few forces conspiring to make the Bills a natural trade up uh, candidate. One is their timeline. This is a team that should be trying to win now with Josh Allen. It's obvious. Obviously, there's also need at wide receiver. And then the other thing, and I think this is what um, really matters when it comes to who they might trade up for, I think the top three receivers in this class, Harrison Jr., Neighbors, and Odunze, are all in a tier of their own. And I, have, I think they're both prospects that have both incredibly high floors and incredibly high ceilings, which is mm. to say I think they're worth trading up for. Now the question is, well, which one might actually be available? And that to me would be a Dunze, potentially at nine. You'd have to leapfrog Ooh. the Jets. Mm. It would take a lot, let's be clear. To go from 28 to nine, you're definitely having to give up a future first. But when you consider the fact that not only are you beating a, a receiver in Odunze who can win at all three levels, who you can just line up outside, he's a true X who is about as polished a route runner as you'll see, uh, and that you'd be getting him on still a relatively cheap contract compared to how much uh, top receivers in the NFL are making right now, I think it's worth it for Buffalo. I don't know if Chicago will do it, to be clear, mm. but if I'm Brandon Bean, I am picking up the phone and asking. It's really interesting, too, because it's something that I think we've all talked about is, is knowing how Romo Dunze is as a person. You think mm. about adding him to that locker yes. room. Mm -hmm. That's another thing that you can't ignore. All right, so part of this has to do, Hawk, with the fact that they keep running into the Chiefs. But right. has the window closed when we talk about Super Bowl window on yeah. this version of Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills? I, I think the draft is going to determine that. But even the fact – that we are having that conversation is a cause for concern because when you think about elite level quarterbacks and I know we've had this discussion and people stand on so many different sides of the argument though the window never closes for the very best quarterbacks mm -hmm. and so if Josh Allen is that this is the season that we're going to see that we know Stefan Diggs has the most catches over the last four seasons in the NFL to Fields Point he is a number one receiver tried and true when Joe Brady came on they didn't use him as much but the threat of him on the field forced defenses to account for him and that's going to be gone and we remember what Josh Allen was like prior to that he was still in developmental years yeah. but going into this draft I think the floor wide receiver that they can take is probably Brian Thomas. I had the Bills going up to get him even when they had Stephon Diggs for number two. Now they're missing a one and a two receiver, yeah. so they need somebody lights out to try to at least get as close to keeping pace as possible because I haven't seen from Josh Allen him be the kind of quarterback that can still win and execute when the receivers and the weapons aren't top tier. Hey, we've seen teams before jump up from where the Bills are to go get an elite wide receiver. It was exactly what the Atlanta Falcons did with Julio Jones. But the cost would be prohibitive. And just think back, when the Kansas City Chiefs traded Tyreek Hill, a lot of people said, well, they've got to replenish the cupboard there with Tyreek Hill gone. And the Chiefs have gone and won two straight Super Bowls. So the mm -hmm. Bills need to find more wide receiver help. They know that, but they're going to weigh the cost analysis of everything here to determine whether it makes sense to trade up, trade back, stay where they are. They do have to come out of this draft with a wide receiver or two. Everybody knows that. But again, it'll be who they're targeting 
where they value them and what the cost would be to have to go up or back. Yeah, Shefty, I thought the point you made towards the end there about the bills maybe moving back was particularly notable as well. Our colleague Bill Barnwell has laid this out, I think, beautifully just in terms of how the bills. Yes, we all think the idea of moving up in the draft to solidify one wide receiver spot will be logical. But given the depth of this class, and I believe this, but Mel Kuyper Jr., who's been doing this for 46 years, also mm -hmm. believes it. So I take his word as gospel. It's the deepest wide receiver class maybe that he has ever studied. If you turn pick 28 into potentially two picks in the second round or multiple picks that have legitimate draft capital attached to them, you could take multiple swings and fill out what could be argued as multiple open spots right now in that wide receiver room, given the fact that as things presently stand, it's Curtis Samuel, Khalil Shakir, and Mac Hollins is the Bills' top three options in the wide receiver room.